In a matter of moments, NASA hopes to confirm a theory that water lies beneath the lunar surface and what that could mean for us. We're going to bring you this event live. Let's get right to NBC's Tom Costello. Tom, good morning. All systems go? It is all, uh, all nominal, as they say in NASA speak. Right now, everything is going very well. On the surface of the moon, where they are targeting, they believe the temperature is about minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we know already that lunar orbiters have detected really what they believe are excessive amounts of hydrogen especially at the poles. So this is all about slamming this as hard as they can. They're going to go with the, with a 5,000 pound rocket here in just a few minutes, traveling at one and a half uh, one and a half miles per second. And when they do, they expect this massive explosion to come up off the surface of the moon. And they're expecting dust and rock and debris. But what they're really looking for is it more than hydrogen. Are they, in fact, going to be seeing large quantities of ice right. come up? And will that ice vaporize when it's suddenly hit Tom, with the ultraviolet ri it's rays? It's about to happen in like five seconds. Let's, Let's keep our eyes on NASA's photos. Here are images. November, correct? On Confirm. Near infrared uh, camera. Bob, send NIR-1 to OPR-9. Copy, sending command. We're going to an infrared shot. Mark, Centaur impact. That was an announcement by the flight director that the uh, center impact should have... Uh, flight should have confirm receipt of uh, command, over. Now keep in mind, you're watching the second viewing now curtain start, coming over. from El Cross. Copy that, payload. Tom, I guess if people were expecting some major plume of something visible to the human that. eye, I'm not or, seeing uh, that. Some signs of the impact on the leftmost part and of the... Standing uh, by with mid-infrared changes. The left side of the shadow, right below the, uh, the dimpled crater on the crater, the larger crater rim. The question is, are we gonna, going to get more as we see the satellite now fly through a plume? And, and you're Flight right, I don't see a plume yet. No, Three nothing. Three changes, MIR-1, 1 hertz, MIR-2, 0.1 hertz. Over. Copy science command flight, MIR-1 to 1 hertz. Sending MIR-1 at 1 hertz. Tom, stand by there. We want to bring in Dr. Dr. Michio and Kaku, who is a theoretical the physicist flight. and the author of Physics of the Impossible. He's here in the studio with us. Doctor, is this what you expected, or did you expect to see more? Well, we expected to see more. We expected to see a six-mile plume of gas and debris shoot out with perhaps traces of water, ice, water vapor. And it could be a game-changer if we find ice on the moon. Water can be used for rocket fuel. You separate the oxygen and hydrogen. It could be used for shielding and for drinking water. For the people who were sitting, we were told that with a fairly large telescope here on Earth, you'd be able to see this, and now yet we're looking at images coming from that trailing satellite, and I can't see anything. This is, this is a little surprising. Uh, yeah, but you need a, an, about a 10-inch telescope, probably west of the Mississippi, in order to see anything on the moon. Well, the satellite that's been recording the data right now, sending the images back, that, that satellite is going to impact in about 30 seconds at this mm -hmm. point creating yet another plume. And creating the end of this image that we're right, seeing exactly. right now, I would imagine. And so how soon will, Doctor, will we have any kind of results from NASA as to what was found or not found? It'll take just a few more hours for spectroscopes to analyze the presence for water. And realize that this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. I mean, how often do we hit the moon like this? But I also point out that Mother Nature hits the moon naturally once a week with large meteorites. I was going to say, because there are people who are worried about this, going, oh my gosh, you're going to throw the moon off its orbit and that's going to cause all kinds of problems with us? No way, because Mother Nature does that once a week. Okay. The expense of this is huge, Doctor. There are some people who said, why don't we just take a huge drill to the surface of the Earth and do it that way? What's the answer to that? To put a pound of anything on the moon costs about $50,000. That's five times the weight of gold. So in some sense, if we find ice, it's better than finding gold on the moon. That's how expensive space travel is. And just to make sure we don't connect too many dots, if they find evidence of ice, it does not mean we should be bacon cookies for little green men and women, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, life probably cannot exist in ice. You need liquid water. You need billions of years to get DNA off the ground. So we're not going to find little green men if we find ice on the moon. We're actually a little under a minute now. We were off before. But, Doctor, let me ask you, how likely do you think it is we'll find water? 
It's a long shot. It um, is. However, the payoff is so huge. A bonanza, just think of it, millions of tons of ice under the surface. That could shave billions of dollars off the moon program. And realize with all the budget cuts, uh, NASA is beginning to push back the time for a manned mission to the moon. Why would this water have accumulated at the uh, poles? Cometary collisions going back billions of years, uh, radiation from the sun consisting of hydrogen. Remember, it's very cold on the South Pole, so the sunlight cannot bake the, the uh, surface because it's in a shadow permanently. All right, and Tom, are you still with us? I am. I, I got to tell you, I think that uh, at the moment a lot of people are going to be disappointed. They, yeah. they truly believe that this satellite was going to be providing some spectacular images of the plume, and we don't see that. Now you're seeing the satellite impact the moon. Um, you know, keep in mind that the Apollo missions, the Apollo missions themselves really focused on the equatorial regions of the moon. And so the poles were really left unexplored. And this was why they focused on the poles, because this was thought to be provide the best opportunity for ice, because it would be buried in a very cold part of the, of the, of the pole, and, uh, you know, the, one of the coldest parts of the moon at minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, they're clapping, clapping they're so they're apparently it was successful, but... Well, they, keep in mind, they're also watching a lot of scientific data stream in that we don't have access to. All we see is, are, the, are the pictures, are the feeds, right. but maybe that satellite didn't, in fact, pick up scientific data. And you know what, Tom? I think maybe it's the problem is we're all used to these Hubble-like telescope yeah. images exactly. where you get to see just this incredible detail, and maybe that was, that was uh, oversold in this particular case. Well, I, I, for all of us, I think we're all a little bit stunned that we didn't see more. All right, all right. Tom Costello, Dr. Kaku, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pleasure here. We appreciate it.